party. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. I am Amy Chamberlain, chef and owner of the Perfect Wife Restaurant and the Other Woman Tavern. Here on my show, I've been introducing friends, family, food producers to all of you, and learning how to make some really special dishes. Well, tonight you have a super duper treat. I have a new friend, Ed Wilson. He's here from Fairfield, Connecticut. He is an amazing barbecuer. He's won tons of awards. Come on up, Ed, and let's talk about your career. Hi. Hi, Ed. How you doing? Good. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about where you came from. Well, um, I guess the genesis of barbecue uh, for me was uh, in my mother's kitchen. And um, we, we lived on a corner a lot, and the, there was a basketball net underneath the light post. And if you didn't make it home for dinner, you ate at our house. <laughs> so, so Mimi's house was, uh, it was kind of the neighborhood kitchen, and we, I was always around someone who was always cooking. So I kind of gained that, that love of feeding people in, in a gathered setting. And you learn that barbecue is a really great way. It pleases tons of people, right? It's well, yeah, barbecue is, is, is a religion. Um, I call it, it's, this is a trademark, uh, it's a, a year-round sport. <laughs> barbecue is a year-round sport. And, you, you know, when you cook barbecue, I don't, know, I don't care whether you're grilling or you're smoking as I do, it's, it's done in a gathered setting. It's about family, it's about friends, it's about sharing food in a gathered setting. I mean, our first barbecue was uh, the, 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 our first Thanksgiving. You know, food was cooked in, a, in an open, open pit. And from then it evolved. Uh, people in Texas did it a little differently. The Czechs came over, the Germans came over. You go down into, into Texas and there's a, there's a myriad of sausage. Sausage in Texas is generally beef. B Texas is a beef state, right? And if you go to the mid-Atlantic states, Mid-Atlantic, they, they, cook, they cook a lot of baby backs in the Mid-Atlantic states. So as a result, in, when you're doing a competition in the Mid-Atlantic states, you better cook baby backs. If you don't cook baby backs, you get demerits, so to speak, you know? <laughs> so, um, you know, so as we said, Texas is a beef state. The Mid-Atlantic states like baby backs. The Carolinas, we call them North Kakalaki and, and South Kakalaki. They are known for their, their, their pork shoulders. It was a, they, they, they raised pork in the Carolinas. So as a result, it evolved. Uh, Eastern Carolina is uh, known for their vinegar-based sauce that we're gonna make tonight. And uh, the western part of the Carolinas, or North Carolina, is known for tomato-based sauce. So there are regional celebrations of sauces and different cuts of the hog. Mm -hmm. And do people use different kinds of wood in different areas to smoke, or is that kind That's of interesting. universal? Well, no, it's, it's germane to the area that whatever the, whatever the, the native growth is. Mm -hmm. In Texas, they have something called um, post oak. It's so sweet. Wow. It puts such a sweetness on the on the brisket. <laughs> it's just, and you you can only find it in Texas. So there there are people in, in uh, New York City that have. 250 seat restaurants, barbecue restaurants, that are shipping this post oak up there wow. because it, it imparts such flavor, such a unique flavor mm -hmm. on the meat. And yeah. so, so it's an art form, you know, the way you cook barbecue, the way you cook barbecue, we, we all do it a little differently. Your sauces will be different. You know, it's, uh, it's like mama's uh, tomato sauce, you know, the Italian gravy. It, yeah. You know, your grandmother did it one way or if it's Irish uh, potatoes and, uh, you know, six pack of the potato, whatever. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a cuisine you grew up with. Yeah, it's all regional. It's regional, right? yes. That's really neat. And um, you've brought several regions to Fairfield. I mean, Fairfield, Connecticut is in a barbecue region. So in your shop, what's your, what's your biggest seller? Is my pulled pork. You know, pork is, um, the pork shoulder of the hog is pretty hard to, it's hard to beat it up or not do a good job because it's so fatty. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are two parts of the, sh the shoulder of the hog. One is the picnic, or the knuckle, the joint in the, in the, the hog shoulder, and the other is, is in the, uh, actually they call it a Boston butt. I'm not exactly sure why it's the Boston butt, but it's got a clavicle in it, 
and uh, in a lot of competitions, you cook the whole shoulder. It's, it's about 20 pounds. Kind of like a steamship sort of thing. Like a steamship. Like that has the, That's right. the joint in there. Yeah. Um, in a couple of weeks, we're having a pig roast at our house, and um, we're having someone else roast the pig for us. Are there any, any tips you can give us once we get this pig? Well, it depends on who's cooking the hog. Well, let's um, say that it arrives and it's succulent and it's whole and it's amazing and we slap it on this big board. What do we do next? Well, it depends on how he's going to serve it. If, if it were me, I'd probably take the skin off of the front of the hog so that your, your, uh, your guests will come up and do a pig picking, old style uh, North Carolina pig picking. And you, you pick your, your meat off the hog, off the carcass of the hog. Right, I, you come with your plate and your fork and right, right. It's, again, it's family. It's you know, it's a uh, it's a two year old and a sixty year old or an eighty year old on the same level. That's the beauty of it. You know, <laughs> we're equal here. You know, it's whether she wants to t take the the piece off the hog that she takes and he takes his or what have you, it's it's a wonderful thing. It really is. And have lots of different sauces around so people can. Well, a lot of times, a lot of times the 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 hog cooker will will cook it in a sauce. Like in, in the Carolinas, a lot of times they'll, they'll butterfly a, a hog and put it between two sheets of um, a heavy gauge uh, mesh so they can flip it over. You know, you butterfly it on one side, the skin side, and then when you flip it over, you, you may be basting it half the night on the, the skin side so that it holds a, the vinegar-based sauce that they, that they base it with. They'll just pour gallons of sauce inside this carcass. Oh, my God. And it'll just... It's, it's, mm. It's a party. I know he's doing that. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Well, um, I'm I'm dying to learn how to make the sauce, and we're gonna we're gonna make some rubs, and then we're gonna pull some pork that Ed has smoked for us. So uh, let's get to that segment. Let's have some fun. All right, All right. good. <laughs> okay, we're in the kitchen, Ed. Okay. I'm very excited for you to teach us how to make your Eastern Carolina vinegar sauce. You know, there's a, there's a story behind the sauce. Um, I, was in, I was in North Carolina, I cooked for a barbecue convention. I used to sit on the board of directors for the National Barbecue Association. And they said, Ed, we want you to cook for the convention. Well, the convention is 600 people, oh my God. right? So um, there was a competition at the time for sauces. And you're in Carolina, Carolina is vinegar base. So I made, I made this sauce up, and this sauce won the national competition. So it's, it's kind of a little, it's a kind of a neat little story that yeah. I said I was going there to cook. I'm, I better do as you do in Rome. You know, when you're in Rome, you do it as the Romans do, so <laughs> it worked. Wow. And so how did you, let's turn this on and we'll just get, get the, oh, not that one. That would be funny. Yeah, Carolina is known for their, their, their vinegar-based sauces. Whether it's the Eastern Carolina, Eastern Carolina, which is primarily vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and uh, Western Carolina, which is the same vinegar, but it has There's some water. ketchup in it. Keep adding stuff. I'm just gonna add water um, here. Let's see. the The vinegar sauce is basically um, water, ketchup, sugar, red pepper flakes, Worcestershire sauce, uh, kosher salt, and black pepper, and um, are these all measured? Yeah, actually, I measured them at the restaurant. Okay, so we just need to put them in then. Yeah, well, right? th that's not measured. Okay. Um, so we have we put the half a gallon of cider yeah. vinegar in, right? You put the water in. Yep. We need ketchup. Cup. Okay. You trust me, right, to just put it in there? Yes. Oops, that's not even open, is it? Thanks. Uh, Ooh, yes, it is. <laughs> 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 Woo! I'd say. That's about a cup. Okay. All right. Then a half a cup of sugar. Okay, and I ha we have sugar in two things, so here's a half a cup measure. Okay. So that's a lot of sugar, but we have sugar in our rub later. Put that in there. Nice. Quarter of a cup of red pepper flakes. That would be this. Yep, and I think that's what that is. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Waste not, want not, right? Okay. We want you to drink more beer. Quarter cup of kosher salt. 
I like the kosher salt because it's it's coarse. I use it. In, I use it in the um, in my rubs too. You know, the, the because it's coarse, it's a it's a better carrier for your spices. In other words, a lot of times in a competition, people will 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 mop their their meats with mustard. What's mustard? Mustard is a carrier for your spices. So it's a little trick that we use. When we're when we're competing, we'll put some mustard on both sides of the ribs or whatever you're whatever you're cooking, whether it's pork butts or what have you, and then add, add our spices. You may even add your spices overnight because your ribs your ribs are um, inspected on Friday, so you can technically rub them on Friday night and put them in the smoker before you present on Saturday. Tricks of the trade. We're gonna have a barbecue competition in Manchester. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. So I think we're pretty close, All right. right? We need the Worcestershire sauce. And the black pepper. And in the recipes there, it says an eighth of a cup. An eighth of a cup is two tablespoons, just so you know, so you're not searching your house for an eighth of a cup measure. It's, it's one ounce, obviously, for those of you who can do math. Okay, and an eighth of a cup. I'm just gonna do a half of a quarter of a cup. There you go. There we go. And we're going to just let this simmer, right? Yeah, it's going to simmer for about, um, I like a half hour to 40 minutes okay. to let all the spices break down. And you leave, you don't ever strain it, right? You just leave everything right in there? As is. Okay. Yeah. You should shake it every time you, you use it so you bring the, the spices from the bottom up to the top. <coughs> it's spicy. <laughs> is anyone here for the habanero show? <laughs> I'm getting the same effect here. All right, now we're going to make our rib, our rub. Okay. Your rub. Not our rub. Well, look sure. at that. It's our rub. That's right. I hear, okay. I hear there's a Wilson's house in Manchester. Yeah. That's, that's a famous place. That wasn't intentional. <laughs> I mean, the, the name kind of works, but it, it yeah. really wasn't intentional. There's no alcohol in the rub. So you're, you're mm. safe. We can call it Wilson House Rub. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. <laughs> All right, four okay. tablespoons of brown sugar. Yeah, these are these are uh, these items are equal part items. What, what I mean by that is when you're when you're making a rub, I don't care wh what spices you use or what you prefer. Your rub should be they should be based on what you like to use. What, what's what 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 are your flavors? What what do you do? And that's that's when you start getting into the art form of barbecue. You know, I may like more cumin, or you may like more cayenne, whatever the case may be. Let it weave in, your, your theme of spices are basically salt, sugar, paprika, chili powder. You know, and, and then you can weave in anything that you want to make it your signature, signature rub. And your, and your barbecue is going to be, you know, the art form that you've made. You've created it. I know at the restaurant we have a rub for our ribs and that has oregano in it. And there That's you go. Just one more thing to add to it, right? Yeah, it's, it's your signature. Uh oh, cumin. There. I thought maybe that was supposed to go in something else. Garlic powder. There. And now you just. She's ready for the competition circuit. <laughs> yeah. Just mix it up. And um, you brine your chickens, right? Mm. I brine my chickens. You brine your chickens for a lot longer. Tell me, tell me about, first of all, your brine recipe and then what you think brine does for a chicken. Well, you know, I mean, the, the basic, basic recipe for brine is salt and pepper, uh, salt and sugar. So that's, that in and of itself is enough. Mm -hmm. But I use, um, I use a pickling spice and um, probably some dry mustard. Um, in, this, in the pickling spice, you have some bay leaves, some various spices. I boil it up the same way I do the, the vinegar sauce, cool it down, and put it in a 50-gallon <coughs> drum you know, with ice and water to dilute it, and then put my chickens in. I, I use a Bell & Evans chicken, so down in Fairfield, it's probably the, the best chicken we can buy. We can't buy a better chicken. We've got some good Vermont chickens going on up here. I can imagine. This is Vermont. Old Farm is yeah. what we generally use at the restaurant, and I know they're popular among people. Who, they can buy them at our local um, health food stores and mm -hmm. co-ops and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but very big, beautiful breast. And there's, some, there's something about what Brian does to uh, 
the texture of, of uh, chicken in particular. It's, it makes it, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like eating brisket in Texas, you know, with the, with the post oak. It's just, it's just so different. It what do you taste this chicken tonight? I mean, I'm not bragging, but it's just... You've been saying that to me all It's day. just very different. You know, the brining, when you get that brine, what happens with the brine is that because of the salt content the, the, and the moisture, the brine is absorbed into the bone of the chicken so, or the item that you're, you're, you're brining, and it's based from the inside out. It's, it's so moist, it's just It is, it's and crazy. It, it gives you a little bit of a cushion there when you're smoking, right? So right. That if you... Well, you smoke for five hours, so it, it, doesn't, so it doesn't dry, dry out. out. Yeah. Exactly. I'm really looking forward to trying that. My goodness. That's it. All right. So that was quite simple. Going to let that simmer a little bit. Um, you, you have a couple of different... Um, Good. You have a couple of different uh, barbecue sauces that you serve. Mm -hmm. We do, you know, at Wilson's... We call, we call what we do a regional celebration of barbecue. We have a St. Louis style rib. You know, St. Louis, St. Louis ribs are... Get in my space. Are, um, the reason there's a St. Louis cut rib is because that the spare rib comes off this part of the hog from the belly up to the baby back. The baby back runs like our backs. You know, the a baby back, the, the bone is arched. So you can tell a baby back rib. Baby backs generally are... Uh, one, in, one and three quarter pounds. You'll see chilies and the, the rest of these guys kind of using a, a really small rib. I don't use a uh, one and three quarter. I use a probably a two and a half to two and a quarter in down rib, so you get more meat on your bone. But the St. Louis cut rib style cut style rib was was created because the people in the East didn't want to pay for the freight for the piece of the pork that they didn't use, which was the rib tip, which is the brisket bone of the hog. So they, they took the spare rib up to the baby back and cut off the brisket bone, and they called it St. Louis cut rib. So that's how St. Louis cut ribs came about. They didn't want to pay for the freight. Interesting and it, I story. like it more. I think it's meatier. And, I do too. And it's more fun to cook because I think you, you, you don't have to watch it as much. Right. You put it in there, and it's good to go for quite a while. I agree. I so, agree. so um, you have the Carolina sauce, the Wilson House barbecue sauce. What style of sauce is that? It's a pretty. It's um, I, I would call it a mid-Atlantic sauce. You know, the mid-Atlantic states like the, their tomato, the sweet tomato-based sauces, and that's what I would call it. It's it's probably uh, very similar to a, a mid-Atlantic sauce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Well, we're going to try both of those. On and your I have a chipotle. Pork. I didn't bring a chipotle, but the chipotle just adds a little bite to it. Yeah. We add some chipotle peppers to it. If we need a bite, we could probably just add a little bit of this. Ooh. That's biting me. Looks good. Standing here. Looks good. So we made our rub. You rub you rub the meat before you smoke it or before you grill it, and you let it sit for a while, right? Ideally, I mean, depending on your timing, if, if you can... If you put the perfume on. Okay. If you can... Um, if you can set it overnight, that's the ideal conditions because it, it'll help season the meat, help break down the collagen in the meat. You know, um, what makes meat tough? It's, it's the muscle, it's the collagen in the meat. So if, if you can break it down, a lot of times lime juice will break it down. Um, that's what we do for fish. Yeah, any, mm -hmm. any kind of citrus will break down the collagen in, in the meat. So you could, you could technically use that as part, part of your moisture for your, the night before rub. Mm -hmm. Add moisture to it, maybe with maybe a dry mustard. I just made that up. That's hmm. a good idea. <laughs> We're you inventing know, things. You could you could use dry mustard, but but for your moisture, instead of using a, a water, you could use the lime juice. Well, that's our next show, or maybe for the next competition. Interesting. Yes. All right. So we're learning a lot about sauces and rubs. We're gonna break this down, and we're gonna watch Ed pull his smoked pork which you can already smell. And after that, you get to eat it. So let's wrap this up. All right, Ed, it's a moment of truth. This is it. It looks amazing from here. So show us how you pull your pork on live television. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, well, you'll see that, you know, I talked about the clavicle bone as part of the, the two pieces of the, the pork shoulder. And this, and this is it. The, the part of the meat that sits inside that clavicle 
is is this piece right here. And you're talking about a tender piece of meat. It sits right down in there like that. Well, we all know that if you, if, whatever you cook, if there's meat on the bone, that meat that's closest to the bone is mm -hmm. the most flavorful, right? And this, this is the caviar. I call it b barbecue caviar. It's like the oyster in a turkey. Right, okay. right, that's right. Oh, look at and that. And look at the texture of it. It's just... Oh, my goodness. It's unbelievable. So when we have our pig roast, I'm going to look for that piece. Yeah. Well, you're going to have two because there's two there's shoulders, two right? There's two of them, right, Tom? He's already claiming one, <laughs> claiming the other. Oh, and Dad's it, here. He's going to know all about it. He's going to beat me to the, to the cutting board, And that's basically too. it. I mean, it, it's just, you, you know, just it's, it it's just breaking it down. Tell us about this the is, smoke ring. Well, okay, and the, and good the point. Crust. Well, you see this, this, which, this black part, for lack of a better term, is called the bark. And the bark is, is created when the, the spices, your rub, is caramelized on the outside surface of the hog or the meat. And the way it caramelizes is when it reaches 160 degrees, that, that the salt and the spices caramelizes, melts together, and stops, it stops the meat from absorbing the smoke. So technically, you really only need about three hours of smoke on your meat. And then, because the external temperature gets to 160 degrees, it locks, it locks in the flavor, it locks in the juices of that product. And all you really need now is consistent heat. At what temperature? Well, you're, you're going to cook to an internal temperature. Your, your pork shoulders should be 180 degrees, 185 degrees. So they, they, they you, you won't hear bar barbecue guys talk about falling off the bone. Barbecue shouldn't fall off the bone. Barbecue, if, you, if your barbecue falls off a bone, off the bone in a competition, you, you're disqualified. Barbecue should pull off the bone, and there should be some left on the bone. So when you hear someone say, I mean, it's, it's America. It's just what, the way we, we think <laughs> of barbecue. It's all good. Falling off the bone. But it's, oh, it just, I, got, I have some, com, uh, some comments on my Facebook page. Uh, his meat doesn't fall off the bone. Well, it's competition style barbecue. It shouldn't. So it's a year-round sport. You enjoy it the best way you know how. So the smoke ring, that is oh. created by the, um, it's, it's created, the bark, right? It's created by the combination of the, of the bark, you know, the spices that you put in it, but the smoke that you throw on the product. See that? And you that's like ring? a red ring that goes around the whole yeah. piece of meat generally, right? A lot of times I people will say that, 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 that the, the meat's not cooked because it's pink. Oh, yeah. I get that. Well, smoke imparts pinkness to, to the meat. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Look at that. It's just, this is kind of the texture of the bacon. I was telling you about the bacon on mm. the hog. That's really what you want to get from the hog. Get the bacon. Okay. The bacon is in the, in the open side of the belly of the hog. It's So traditionally, or the best way to serve barbecue is plain like this. And you serve the sauces on the side, right? And people can put the sauces on that they want. That's right. And as much as they want. Some people like more than others so I never sauce my barbecue it's always uh, sauce on the side S S O S. S O S. <coughs> excuse me <laughs> so keep in mind that barbecue is a year-round sport and that vinegar sauce is amazing but it's probably unlike anything anyone who hasn't had Carolina barbecue sauce has ever had it's thin it's spicy it's tart it's not barbecue sauce as we know. It's not, it's that kind we get at home? Uh, oh, masterpiece. Or Casey's Masterpiece. Casey Ma what do you uh, get? Sweet Baby Ray's. Sweet Baby Ray's. It's not like he that. He sells a lot of barbecue sauce. Yeah. A lot of barbecue sauce. That's really good. You guys are going to love that. All right. Chicken. This, chicken. this is the, the thing that smells so good. Okay. Mm. Oh my, do I want to put that on the platter? No. Okay, we'll roll it up. Okay. Yeah, I got a good knife for you there. And Ed says that he smokes his chicken and then cuts it up. So it stays nice and moist, it's smoked whole, and then right before you serve it, you cut it up. You got it. 
Everybody make some sort of moaning sound. Oh, excellent. <laughs> and is there, do you suggest different sauces for chicken than pork? Is there, do people like certain sauces with chicken and certain sauces with pork? Or look at the texture. I mean, just it's just it's mm. it's, it's crazy mm. moist. It's crazy <coughs> moist. It's unbelievable. It really is. It's like silk. I want to eat it. Eat it if you want. It's your chicken. Mm. Mm. We have house guests here. <laughs> so there it is. There's the chicken. There's the pork. You're amazing. You do a great job with brisket. I think we need to take a field trip to Fairfield or do to something me. to get Ed up here a little more often. There you go. Um, quick before we, well, actually, we'll talk about that in the exit interview. You can tell me about your little fun thing you had with Guy Fieri, or Fieri, oh. as he likes to say, right? Yeah. Yep. All right. So you got to see the goods. There's more of it. Don't worry. You're not splitting that amongst the 40 of you. <laughs> Um, but we are going to take a quick break, have a little exit interview, and then it'll be dinner time. Yeah. So, Ed, we, we learned a lot, but um, there's some things we haven't covered because we had some co questions from the audience. It would be helpful if you laid out for us, start to finish, mm -hmm. you, get a, you get a piece of meat, how do you start, and where does the finished product end? Well, uh, let's take ribs because it's probably... It's probably more regular than a pork shoulder or a brisket. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, ribs, the underside, the bone side of the rib has, has a silver skin on it. So it needs to be peeled off. We, we in the barbecue business, we say you can't impart flavor to a football because, you know, pig skin, football, that kind of thing. <laughs> so so you, peel off, you peel off that silver skin and then you, you rub both sides of the slab of of uh, ribs, right? I would wrap them in cellophane. Well, what I'd do was I'd mop it in mustard, put, it, put, your, put your rub on it, right? Wrap it in cellophane, put it in the refrigerator overnight, okay? And then take it out in the, in the next day before you're gonna cook it, get it room temperature so it's easier to cook. It doesn't cook as long because it's cold. And put it on, put it on a 200 degree if, if you don't have a smoker, just use a grill. You can use a, a gas grill. The, you know, a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of gas grills have two and three burners, you know, uh, areas. If you put your ribs on the far right side or the far left side of that gas grill and turn on the two, the two other burners, you can kind of create a smoker. Get yourself some wood chips, aluminum foil, just a piece of aluminum foil. Soak the wood chips for 45 minutes to an hour. The longer, the better because what you're trying to do is to impart flavor from the wood. You're not using the wood as a, um, uh, heat. a heat source, you're using it for flavor. Put the wood chips in the aluminum foil basket, bag, however we want, you want to call it, poke some holes in it and let it smoke. Put the, put the ribs on the far side, it's called indirect heat, right? And then let it smoke at 200 degrees for um, you're looking for an internal temperature on your ribs. Your baby back should be around 175. Probably cook them to 165 and they'll cook the rest of the way, right? After you take them off the grill. So cook, and your, your saints your, or your spares should be cooked to 185. There's more fat, there's more meat on them, there's more bone to heat up. So. We had a question about uh, smoking fish. Do you, mm -hmm. do you like to smoke fish? Is there a favorite fish of yours? Uh, I prefer oily fish because they, they hold up well in the mm -hmm. smoker. You know, your haddocks, your scrods, they don't really do well over long periods of time because they're such a delicate white fish. But your, your blue fish, my mother used to make a blue fish dip that was smoked. A friend of mine's dad does that. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, it really is good. It's, there's so much oil in the blue fish that it stands up well. Same with salmon. We smoke trout here in Vermont. There's a lot of trout. and. Um, that's the first thing that I ever learned to smoke when I worked for a guy here, Jeff Cook, when he owned Ye Old Tavern. And um, then I bought my own buffalo smoker and started doing it at The Perfect Wife. And Billy Hamoka, who's in the back there, was bringing me shavings of apple and cherry wood from his cabinet company, cabinet making company. And mm. um, that was always, smoking fish is, is not easy. There's not much room for error. 
and you brine it and you put it in front of a fan and you let the pellicle come to the top, right? That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. Give it. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I just look for the moisture. Right. Okay. And it creates a sheen, and then that blocks the moisture in when you're smoking it. It keeps it from from getting dried out, essentially. Well, you know, when you're grilling, you, you gr when I grill steaks, for instance, um, a certain thickness and a certain cut of steak, you pretty much know when to turn it. But the sweating, the sweating of the steak, any meat, when the, when the meat sweats, that means that, in my mind anyway, and this is my science, it means that 50% of that meat from, the, from the, the, the grill up to the center of the meat is cooked because it's, it's, it's warm and it's pushing the moisture up through the surface. That's when I flip it, when I start to see moisture. That's what I do. Yeah. Then you, I go one third, one third, and then the, the blood's coming, and you flip it over, you do the third, third, perfect medium rare. Oh, you keep turning it so you have the, the grill yeah. marks? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm kind of we all think, that. you know, it's, it's a science. It, it works. <laughs> it works. Customers like that, yeah. you know. Yeah. And we like it at home, too, I guess. Um, I'm, I'm honored that you're here teaching us and um, showing me your tricks. You have been on Guy Fieri's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, and, and now that you've been on Life of the Party, you probably can made stop it. right there. Yeah. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for thank being you. here, Ed. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you, studio audience. Thank, thank you. you out there in TV land, and we'll see you all next time on Life, Life of the, the Party! Party. Take your chances and sleep